Hi there, my name is Alex and I'm an Applications Engineering Intern from National Instruments UK. This is just a really quick video to show the MyLCD project I've uploaded to the NetNI community, uh, which shows how we can use the National Instruments MyDAC data acquisition device to control a liquid crystal display. So uh, if you download the attached uh, MyLCD folder and just open it up, you'll see that inside we have a couple of folders um, and a few files. Uh, the file that we're interested in is MyLCD.LVProj, which is a LabVIEW project. So I'll just double click to open that up. Just to let you know I'm using LabVIEW 2011 SP1. So if you guys are using a version of LabVIEW uh, a little bit earlier than that, just please let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to downgrade these files for you. Once the Project Explorer is loaded up, you'll see that we have three virtual folders inside. We have uh, the documentation folder, uh, which contains uh, a couple of wiring diagrams and some manuals to reference uh, that contains some um, pretty useful examples and exercises for you guys to try out. Um, there's also a type definitions folder, and this is probably the most important one because it contains the liquid crystal display class. Um, so this is where we'll be basing most of our focus on uh, in this video. Um, so this is a LabVIEW object, um, or, or a class I've I've designed which uh, essentially encapsulates a lot of the functionality when using uh, NI DAC MX VIs to communicate with a liquid crystal display. Uh, so the intention is that you use these VIs and everything's a lot more simple and straightforward rather than focusing on all the binary that goes on underneath. Uh, and finally there's the VIs folder. So if we expand that you'll see that there's two more virtual folders. We have uh, the examples folder and the exercises folder. Uh, so just to introduce you guys a bit to the project, uh, I'll just open up one of the examples. So inside we have something called uh, the LCD Signal Analyzer, so I'll just expand that and load it up. Uh, so the LCD Signal Analyzer is something which uses these VIs I talked about earlier in the Liquid Crystal Display class um, to increment a number and show this number on the screen of an LCD. Um, but what's special about it is that when we run the VI, you can actually see the control signals being sent to the LCD. So this is really useful for debugging because we actually get to see what exact signals we're generating to the, the device and then kind of work back from that and understand where we might be going wrong later on in applications. Uh, we also have the ability to pause the operation of the application and you can see that the current value that it's, it's currently paused at is 175. So on my liquid crystal display at the moment it says incrementing and set at 175. Uh, and on this graph you can see all of the signals that were involved in kind of driving that number to the liquid crystal display. Uh, for some information and kind of like to, to better your knowledge of these different signals you can just hover your mouse over them and then uh, a short little tip strip will pop up um, which kind of shows um, a little bit of an explanation about how we can communicate with these different uh, VIs. So let's see. If I uh, hover my mouse over the register select signal, you can see that this is used to um, generate either instruction data or address uh, random access memory on board the LCD instead. Uh, so this is a pretty cool VI to just kind of better your understanding of how liquid crystal display communication works. And I'll just stop this. So next we're going to look at how we can actually use these VIs to create our own liquid crystal display applications with my Okay, deck. so now we've got that stuff out of the way, let's have a look at the liquid crystal display class in a bit more detail. Uh, we've got what we're going to do is try and set up our own VI to communicate with a liquid crystal display and start trying to write our own text to it uh, from the my deck. Um So in the Project Explorer, what I'm just going to do now is go to File and then New VI, just to create a new virtual instrument to store our code. Uh, so if I go back to the Project Explorer, the first thing I'm going to do is grab the Initialize LCD VI, uh, which belongs to the Liquid Crystal Display class. So I'll just click and drag that onto the block diagram. Uh, so what this does is just initially configures the Liquid Crystal Display that we're trying to control. Um, so generally, Liquid Crystal Displays come with an 8-bit data interface um, and some extra lines for the register select signal, the clock line, and also the read-write line. Um, so that's a total of 11 different data lines, and uh, as you can probably tell on the MyDAC, we only have actually 8 digital inputs and outputs. Um, so from the get-go, we wouldn't be able to use the liquid crystal display straight away in 8-bit mode. However, they also offer a 4-bit mode that we can use instead. So this is where the data line, that is those 8 bits of data, are essentially split in half and we only end up using 4 of the pins to communicate the same amount of data. Uh, the only drawback to this is that when we split that data in half, it actually takes two uh, write operations to get those, those two 4-bit nipples of data over to the LCD. Uh, so on the initialized uh, LCD VI, what I'm just going to do is hover my mouse over the communication interface uh, terminal. I'll right click, go to create, and constant. Uh, you'll see as default that's set to 4-bit mode, so that'll work with our MyDAC. 
You'll see that in the top left of the VI we still have a broken run arrow uh, and if we click on that it shows us that the required input physical digital lines is not wired. So if I double click that it shows us that this terminal is still missing. So what I'll do is again I'll just right click on that and create a constant. Uh, the physical digital lines uh, input is just so that we can tell which digital lines on our MyDAC we actually want to use for the LCD. Um, so in this example I'm just going to use all of them. So I'll just browse over to those lines and hit OK. Great. Um, so that sets up the liquid crystal display. So um, if we ran the VI now, what we'd see is that the screen would kind of turn on and it kind of go blank because we haven't actually told it what sort of characters we want to see on the screen. Um, so what we can do is grab the right string VI. This allows us to actually update text onto the screen. Uh, so we can start writing our own messages. Um, but there's a few other things I want to change as well. If I go back to the Project Explorer, I'm going to grab the Set Cursor Settings VI. Um, so again, there are a few different terminals that we have to specify because we can configure whether or not we actually want uh, the text to show with the set display input. So I'll just set that to true. Um, we also have the set cursor blinking input. So this says whether or not we actually want the cursor to flash on screen. I kind of find that quite annoying, so I'm just going to set that to false for the time being. Uh, we can also show the cursor position, so I'll, I'll wire that up to the true constant as well. So that's good. So that kind of sets up how we want to display on the screen. So there's still no text just yet, uh, but that's what the um, the right string is for. So what I'll do first is just wire through um, that class so that it can be passed through to all of these different functions. And I'll also carry the errors through just to make sure we catch any problems that might happen. So on the right string VI, I'll just right click and create another constant on the right string input. You'll notice that by default it's set to hello world, but I'm just going to write Alex is awesome instead. Much better. Uh, and the last function we're going to need, uh, and it's quite an important one, is the close LCD VI. So I'll just wire the class through there too and carry errors. So the close LCD VI is set up so that once we've we finish interacting with the LCD, we set it back to its original state using 8-bit mode, uh, and also we'll just empty the screen of any text we've currently written. Uh, you'll see now we've got uh, the run arrow isn't broken, so that means we can run the VI. So so this is all done. So if I run it, you'll see that on the MyDAC we'll very quickly see the text Alex is awesome appear on screen, but then it will kind of disappear. The reason for that is because once we've actually written the Alex is Awesome text to the LCD, we close it off straight away, which clears uh, all text which has been written. So we don't want to do that. So let's see if we can kind of update what the text on screen as the program runs. Um, so what I'll do instead is introduce a while loop. So I'll just delete the center code for now. I'll right click on the block diagram, go to structures, and then while loop. And I'll just draw this in that blank space. You'll see that we have a new broken arrow, and that's because I've less this conditional terminal of the while loop on wired. Essentially, it, LabVIEW needs to know when we want this while loop to execute and when we actually want it to finish executing. So when a true value gets passed to this, this stop button on the conditional terminal, then the while loop will be executed and we'll be able to go through to the next set of our code. So what I'll do is I'll just wire in those class constants and I'll also create a control on that stop button. So now if we double click the control it'll take us to the front panel and we'll see that LabVIEW's created a stop button for us. So this will allow us to stop the VI and uh, stop updating the screen when we're finished. So if I hit control E, go back to block diagram, uh, let's try and finish this off. The first thing I'm going to do is set the cursor position in the loop. Now the reason I'm going to do this is because whenever we write text to the screen the cursor position is actually automatically incremented. So that makes it a lot easier to write kind of uh, sequential pieces of text. The problem with this is that we just want to make sure that we're only displaying one number rather than appending new numbers after the last one, which would happen if we weren't actually resetting the cursor position. So what I'll do is on every iteration of this new loop when we're going to write a new number, what I'll do is just reset the cursor position to zero. That should be good. Uh, I'll grab another right string VI and just wire all the rest of this up. Okay, this is looking good. So, yeah, I want to show a number update on the LCD, so I guess the last thing that would be required is for me to wire the loop iteration count, so a number which tracks the number of times the while loop is iterated, and then uh, just wire this to the right string. However, we get a broken arrow. Now, if we hover our mouse over that and using the context help window with control and H, I'll just drag that over here, you can see that the error we're getting for this wire is that we've connected two different terminals of different types. That's because we're trying to write a number to a string. 
and it doesn't quite work like that. So we're going to have to pull, perform a little bit of conversion in between. I'll just double click this wire and then hit delete to get rid of it. Uh, and just so you know, I can also hit Control and B to remove all broken wires on screen. So I'm just going to hit Control and Space to bring up the quick drop window because this is a really useful tool for when you know the name of a VI you want to use but you can't really find it in the palettes. Um, I'm pretty bad at finding stuff so I'm just going to type in the name. I know it has something to do with decimal strings. There we go, the number to decimal string. So this will take our iteration count, convert it into a string so that we can pass it through to the LCD. And I'll just use that now. So I'll just wire this up. And now if I run the VI we get a number count on the LCD. So that works pretty good. Um, and also we can check um, how this number also correlates to what we're seeing on screen by using the probe tool. So I'll just hover my mouse over the iteration count while we're running and you can see that it changes into a small little P. Uh, this means that we can probe this line. So I'll click on that and it brings up the probe watch window. You can see at the moment we're up to around three, 350. And if I check on the LCD, I can see the exact same. So this is working pretty well. Uh, so we're not limited to just using kind of numbers, we could also display the time, for example, or um, whether or not we've hit a particular state in our application. LCDs are really good for showing output and giving the users just that little bit extra information um, when we're using uh, em kind of embedded applications. So that's great. So I'll just close down that window and remove all the probes. And I'll just head over to the front panel and hit the stop button to end the VI.